we have here some gorgeous, beautiful jade. Look at that, that is some nice jade. We have some, this is eight millimeter. We have some six millimeter amethyst, also gorgeous. And we have some four millimeter lapis lazuli. It's actually dark blue, might look almost black in the video. Anyway, we'll put those aside for a sec, get ourselves wire. We use 20 gauge silver non-tarnished wire, yes. Um, let's see, for the first part we'll do about hmm, six inches. And let's throw one of our beads on there. Make it like an inverse snowman. It's going to be awesome. And we want to go about to the middle of the wire. And we're going to crimp each side, press it tight, crimp the other side like that. And we're going to take our loop making pliers and we're going to make two loops, grip it right about here, and really all you need is three types of pliers, and you could literally get all three in a bulk pack. I, I don't spend a lot of money for these pliers because I go through them quickly. Uh, I never spent more than $20 for a pair, and actually the $5 pairs work just fine, even if I have to replace them once a year. All right, so these loop making pliers, and then we got our these are all-purpose everything. They actually have cutters on the end. You don't need those, but not our regular cutters for getting in sharp places. You can't always get in where you need to with those. Anyway, so we have our two loops. Make them nice and flat. Make them face the same way. Nah, you can work, worry about that later. We're going to take one of these loops, and we're going to hold it tight with a pair of pliers. And we're going to wrap it around. It kind of naturally wraps around on a diagonal. Once around, then goes in the crevice. Once around, then goes in the crevice. And then we come up to the top. Oh, I cut that one tight. Maybe give yourself more than six inches, maybe eight inches. Look at that. Just made it. And we're going to come around right there, and then we're going to crimp this right, tuck that sharp edge right into itself. So it's in. And then we want these to kind of straighten out so you have a nice, beautiful diagonal straighten that out and then we're going to come back with this guy we're going to double it up make it look pretty come around come around hopefully this one will make it too oh just made it i've never been that close ever i'm going to give myself a little more room next time but get the idea very pretty and we are gonna tuck that in look at that Nobody on earth. There's only seven people on earth who can tuck this as tight as I can with this amount of wire left on the line. It's a skill. They really, uh, you have to go to special forces for this. And then out of that, only like 2% of those who join survive to the end of the training. Most people quit in frustration. Just, just to say that you were chosen for the training is incredible. It's something to brag about. No, Hardly anyone you'll ever meet has made it through. But... I happen to be one of those people, and I don't like to brag about it, so you won't hear me bring it up much. Anyway, we're, I mess with these a lot. I mess with the wire a lot. i to try to get it right where I want. This would be good for 22 gauge, too. Sometimes 20 gauge is a little bit hard, but that's going to be really pretty. And now we're going to do the bottom part of the wire. Uh, again, I'm going to do the next one, but I'll save you the trouble. You can see that, you know, basically we're going to make two of these pretty much the same. I'm going to do the bottom part of the earring now. 20 gauge again. Uh, let's give ourselves some extra it's for the bottom part. Let's do, um, huh, let's say about a foot and a half. Now, we want these to be the same. So we're going to cut the two wires and we're going to measure them out to be the same. Because when you do crazy swirls and you need a pair of matching earrings, they don't have to be exactly identical, but they should be the same weight and general size. So you want to give yourself the same amount of wire for both. In fact, that's going to be too much. I don't want to make them that big, so I'm going to cut it down to about a foot. So I'm going to press them together, give myself about a foot. That should be good. And that's what we'll work with here. Take the first one. I'm going to loop it right there in the middle. Loop it. Grab it. Twist it. Twist it again. Now we have these together. This is something I like to do. And 
just with our fingers now, just with our fingers. It might be easier to practice on 22 gauge. 20 gauge is going to be hard on your fingers when you start, unless you have fingers of steel. So we're going to make a loop, holding it tight, not letting the wire cross over itself, keeping it completely parallel. Sometimes you got to press it a lot with your fingernail to make that loop as tight as you want. We're going to come around this way, make a loop going the other way. And there's really no rhyme, reason, or wrong or right way to do this. You just keep on swirling until you get it the way you want. I'm going to make a big swirl. This will be for the bottom. Make that one a little bit more oval. You can pull it in and out. And then we're going to come back the other way again like this. And not being greedy, we'll come up to the top and finish it. So pretend this is the top here like that. Pull it back up, we're going to scarf it, spin it around, give it a scarf. If you haven't heard the other videos, this is what I call scarfing. Come back up to the top, you wrap the wire around, and then you can usually tuck it in somewhere neatly into the... Here it's basically, it's going to see some expert tip tucking right here. Again, don't aim it at your eyes, it'll shoot, unless you're wearing glasses or safety glasses. Let's come around. Just tuck that. You want to muscle it in. Tuck it tightly. Always check it. Make sure you don't feel any scratches. You feel the slightest scratch, you go in there and you press it again, cut it again. Make sure you got that sharp edge. Never, ever, ever let sharp edges show. And voila, I'm going to mess with this. I'm going to twist that a little bit like that. And that is kind of a pretty piece for the bottom of an earring. That could be an earring by itself. You could put the hook right there. But instead, we're going to add those beads at the top. So, need a little tiny jump ring. If I had left this part with an opening, we could just hook it up right like that. But, just get ourselves a little tiny jump ring. This is, I believe, a four millimeter jump ring. Might even be three millimeter tiny. Might need two pair of pliers to open it if you're starting out. And just hook that in. Get your earring hook, always pull that little ball thing down so you can open it. These kind usually open from the inside. If you pull them back and forth too many times, they can break. And pick which side you want to be the front. Uh, this is not the prettier side. This is the prettier side. So that's the side that will face out as the earring pokes into the earlobe. And then we'll turn it back upside down, pull that little part down so we can close it. And there we have a long but very elegant earring for the ladies for their dinner parties. We'll just uh, put that right here for now. And we'll work on the other one. Or a second one again. Bring it to the middle. Make your loop. Do the same thing as before. <laughs> Do 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 do